So in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate a, a new, another uh, marker removal method. Um, this particular approach will, uh, will involve the creation of a still patch from a specific frame um, in, in, the, in the sequence. Um, and I'll be tracking that through the entire shot. Um, this method doesn't benefit from real-time sampling um, and therefore sometimes it's necessary to perform a colour correction on the patch, uh, particularly when uh, the light changes across the, um, across the backdrop over, over time. Uh, in this particular case that doesn't happen so this would be a perfect uh, opportunity to use what I think is probably the simpler of, uh, of the methods. So wherever the tonality of the backdrop is consistent, I tend to be approaching it in this way. So I'll stop the playback and I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, if we just look at this marker here that's, uh, that's coming along, you can see that that goes along, it goes past and through the head. Um, and then there's kind of like a settling, a settling off, it continues on its way. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's, a couple, there's an intersection point which will allow me to do something um, interesting that I haven't done so far. Uh, but, um, but that's going to be the patch, so this, this, this marker here is going to be the one that I'm going to patch. So what I typically do is I'd come to a point that's probably close to, to the area where I'm actually going to be, um, where it's going to be uh, sort of more affected. Uh, in other words, close to the to the character. In this particular case, I'm choosing frame 60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this and I'm just going to add a type beta, add a roto paint node, and put that above my viewer. And then with this roto paint, I'm just going to get uh, my clone tool. Um, let's have a look. I can uh, get away with. I'm, I'm just going to try and do this in one fell swoop. Uh, I'll have an opacity of maybe point. Uh, 7 or something like that, hardness something similar. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use control just to take my sample point, take my sample point from somewhere around there. It really is arbitrary because this is a nice uniform green screen and um, and it's just going to be a single frame so I can just basically patch at that point. And you can see that that's, I've done that in one fell swoop just with a uh, just more or less with almost with a single click. Okay. On this particular mark, if I just come across to my lifetime, you can see it's just referencing a single frame. As long as it references the frame where I've actually drawn the spline, uh, which in this case is frame 60, then that's fine because I'm just going to be basically holding and locking it off on that particular frame, so I don't need to extend this. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm actually going to just apply a frame hold. So that sits below and set that frame to frame 60. Okay, so there it is my, uh, there's, there's my lock off now and you can see that the timeline now doesn't move while over the viewer is connected to this, uh, to this frame hold. Okay, so I now want to constrain this, uh, this patch um, and the reason for that will become apparent later on when I have to deal with the intersection points where the, where the patch needs to hide behind the, the head. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a, 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 just a straightforward roto node and connect it up below here and then I've connected up here so, we, so we're actually bypassing the patch uh, so we can actually see it and I'm just going to take my roto and like almost always when I'm doing a, a marker removal, uh, I use the ellipse. If I hold down shift, uh, control and alt, which again is a bit of a handful. But if I do that, then I can draw out from the center, make it just a little bit bigger than the marker, then type E, just to give myself a little bit of feather there. Okay, that should be okay. So if I hook up now below there, just need to do a couple of things to my, uh, to my roto. I need to um, I need to set this to pre-multiply by RGB just to isolate that off, um, and I also need to set the clip to replace. This doesn't have a, an an obvious effect on the um, on on proceedings. Uh, basically, when the re replace is enabled. The existing channels get cleared to black before you actually draw into them. So effectively, it's almost like setting the uh, setting the the old sort of uh, the alpha channel to black. 
uh, before you actually draw, draw the roto spline and I like to do that because sometimes I want to retain the alphas I'm not actually doing that in this particular case but I might want to re retain all the alphas and combine all the alphas so that we can actually sort of save those and send those out as a, as a distinctive pass which, which the green screen remover can then just basically just drop straight into their uh, into their comp to get the effects but uh, but in this particular case that's what it's for it's just for if we want to retain the alpha because naturally when we paint with the roto paint we don't actually get an alpha from that uh, it's just an RGB patch over anyway that's uh, that's sort of a, a little bit of an aside uh, what I want to do now is I just want to be tracking the shot so I'll just create another stream down from here and hook up to it um, this, I know I've been building up my trackers down here uh, and linking via expressions. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to put it into the node stream itself, um, and I am going to want a, a dot node later on anyway because I'm going to have to merge this patch back over the plate. So I've just created that there to sort of serve two purposes. So I'm just going to add a tracker node in now and just drop that into this uh, in, in, into this stream, um, and I'll just come to the first frame and yeah, this is going to be my marker that I'm going to be uh, dealing with so I'll do it from the first frame so I'll add a track just pop it over shrink it down the feature area yes, and then uh, just extend it a little bit like that so I can track through now um, we're going to come to a point where this is going to where this is going to break because it's going to obviously intersect with my character. So I'll just wait for that to happen. Bang! There it happens. So let's just uh, take a look at this now. Just come in, and we can see that there it happens. That's the last good frame there at frame at frame 42. So I will kill any frames that occurred there on after. And then I'm just going to scrub forward in time until my marker appears around the other side, which is there at frame 53, and I'm just going to manually push that back over there, place it, and then I'll maybe just pop forward a couple of frames just to get it absolutely bang on, and then I'll send it back on its way. And just watch this just to make sure it doesn't do anything weird, um, and this should be a fairly straightforward track. There we go. So we've just got these uh, these areas inside here, which is about 10, 10 frames, where the marker is essentially going to disappear behind. So as long as that intersection frame is OK, and then this intersection frame on the other side is OK, maybe just back that off just a tiny bit more, just about there, just to centre it, then, uh, then all should be well. OK. So, as I said, something slightly different this time. We need to our tracker rather than it being in the um, rather than it being sort of connected uh, via an expression to particular properties. I can put it in the stream like this, and what this means basically is it'll affect every node um, beyond beyond it in the in the stream. All I need to do is I just need to tell it to uh, to transform by match move, um, and I need it to tell it what my reference frame is, which is frame 60. Okay. So I guess the last step, the last step here in, in actually sort of apply, applying the, cat, the patch is to add a merge node, and we're merging A over B, so we're merging our, um, we're merging our patch over our plate. And I'll just tuck that in there and bring a dot, a dot node out. And there we go, I'll just empty my properties bin and we can take a look at this so we can see our marker coming, our patch coming across. Can't see it all that well at the moment, but uh, but obviously we do see it there. Uh, we can uh, we can put a grade node in, for example, uh, maybe just below, uh, before everything else, and, um, and just bung up the gain, just on the blue channel there, a little bit more, so we can see that that patch is moving nicely with the track. It obviously, it goes through the head. There's an intersection point there at frame 43, and then another intersection as it comes out at frame 52, and then goes on its way. So, without the grade node, we can see that that uh, just disable that. 
without the grade note we can see that that looks really nice there's no discernible pattern change or anything like that and as I said that is a that is an issue um, I will actually just show something which is what to do if you do have some color uh, some color variances over the life cycle of your clip because you would need to uh, you would need to be color correcting your patch so the way to do that would be to be uh, putting a grade node in down here instead so um, so as long as it's after the frame hold because uh, because we need to be able to keyframe our, our animation our uh, our color correction so if I just um, if I just uh, gain up a little bit you can see there is our marker I'm just gaining up on the color correction there so what I would be doing here for example just set that back down pop it on the first frame and um, and then right click and set a key on my game and let's say for example that at frame 36 um, the uh, the color starts to uh, the, the color of the backdrop starts to get a little bit a little, a little bit darker from that point then I would I would set another key there and then come to the point where it is darker and then just darken off my uh, my marker you can see there it's just darkening off um, and then at the point where it maybe lightens up let's say maybe there uh, maybe I set another key and then just come forward a little bit and then take that maybe the other direction and then let it carry on a little bit more and maybe uh, maybe set another key and then maybe further on down here bring it back to one those are completely arbitrary the purpose of doing that is just to show you how we can uh, how we can uh, just grade our our, uh, our marker to deal with any variances okay probably a good way to test this as well is to actually make a copy of the tracker I'll do this now and put this below the merge hook up to it and then set this uh, set this tracker to stabilize and that way when we're looking at these kind of things now we're basically locked on so again I'll just clear my properties panel we can see our marker in fact if I turn that on as well we can see it absolutely clearly and you can see there that that stabilizes our marker so we can watch it we can get in close and watch it without trying to chase it around the screen so if I just turn that off now we can see those color color changes taking place there okay so that is typically how we deal with any variances in the in the color of the green screen over time okay I'll take that off now uh, I won't need that again so to finish off, just want to take a look at how we deal with these intersection points. So, um, so let me just look at this through my uh, through through my merge node. Just try and get in a little bit closer. I'll just turn on that uh, turn on this so that we can actually see our mark coming through. So what we've got here is we've got an intersection point at frame 43 and then another intersection point at frame 52 and we obviously need to deal with this and this is why we kind of constrained our uh, our patch with this roto now because this gives us the opportunity to do this so what I'm going to do is I'll just bring up my roto properties there you can see there's my ellipse that goes around my patch um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a key on this this is the la the first or should I say the last good frame so up on here on the menu here we can see we've got an add key button so I'm just going to add a key there and then I'm just going to come forward one frame where we've got the intersection and add another key there and I'm going to come to the next point which is this where we've got the intersection taking place at frame 52 so I'll add a key there and then I'll add a key at the first good frame after the, uh, after the intersection so I've just created four keyframes so essentially this is the last good key keyframe so I don't want to do anything about that. What I do want to do is come in on this keyframe and make a little bit of a change and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter the, the properties of my spline itself. So I'm just going to take that in like so and then, uh, then maybe just get the whole thing and just back it off, look for my marker and then just come in so then maybe just take my feather back out so just try to deal with the and because this is keyframe then we obviously we've got a good frame there then it goes behind so we don't even need to worry about it after that point 
there we go. So we've got that point there. We'll test it in a, in a second. I think that I may just need to, to just push it in a little bit closer there and just back off that feather a little bit at the intersection. But we'll test that uh, a little bit uh, later on when we come, when we finish both sides with the um, with the stabilizer on. So I'm coming back to this side again. We've got that. Uh, we've got a good frame there. So frame 52 is the one, is the offending one. So again, I'm just going to come back to this sort of position. So I'll take that something like that. I do like to keep a little bit of feather if I can. Back it off. Maybe just rotate this one a little bit and just tuck it in like so. Okay. So I think that that will do us. We've got uh, we've got the got the marker going through there. We've got a little bit of a cut there. I think actually it probably just needs to go a little bit closer. And then, to be honest, what it does behind here is arbitrary because it's uh, it's, it's obscured. But I could um, I could come to this frame and um, and open it up again. Same on this on this frame. This frame, come back one more and open that up just to make absolutely sure that I don't get any um, any bad ones there. I could put I can possibly see that I may need a may need to deal with that particular frame as well. And I'd probably do that just by backing the whole thing in just a touch. Right, so just as long as I don't allow any of that um, marker to creep creep out the other side. Look at that, that's possibly similar. So I'll just come to that frame there, 44, and just back that off. Okay, let's test it then. So let's come back to our um, to our um, our stabilize and turn off the we'll turn off the color correction. And just watch this through. Okay, so the intersection looks okay. All I need to do now is just set the keyframes to actually control the opacity. So to do that, I'm just coming to here, which is the uh, the frame. Uh, that's probably the frame, the last frame before I need to turn the opacity off. So I'll set a key there, and then I'll come to the other side there, which is the this frame here, 52, which also needs a key setting so that they're fully opaque on that side and that side, and then. As we come onto the inside, so that's the frame that we uh, changed. So from there, I'll take the opacity down to zero, and then come to the come to this frame and take the opacity down to zero as well. So what's happening in between, while well, well, it's behind the head, is that it's it's fully transparent, and then as it pops out the other side, then our our patch goes opaque, so, so the opacity goes back to one, and then we've got our patch. So I'll just clear that out so, so we can test it. So we can just scrub through rather than playing it out there. So we know around about 42, 43, we're looking for any evidence of that marker appearing or any evidence of us degrading our matte line uh, with that with that, with the spline, and it looks good there. You can see possibly just a, a slither uh, appearing there, which might just involve just taking this forward just a touch, an absolute touch there. Let's have a look as it comes out the other side, which is around about frame 52. You can see again, maybe just an absolute slither. I think that's looking pretty good. So there we go. We've achieved, we've achieved a, a patch. Ooh, glitching. That's obviously an issue with my graphics car, so I won't, um, I won't inflict it any more pain on it. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up uh, now. I hope that you found this useful. This is a great method, as I've said, for when the uh, when the uh, the 
the background area or the area that you want to apply the patch from is very uniform um, and uh, as I said you don't really need to concern yourself with, uh, with, with any sort of real time changes in the pattern or in the coloration. So in this particular case perfect for this. It's very quick and easy to do. You could do multiple patches at the same time. So uh, so you'll probably find that this method is, is one of the methods that you probably use more, more frequently than any other. Anyway, that's the end of the tutorial. Hope you found it useful.